Welcome into this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to talk about getting proper perspective when you're creating a composite image, when you're dragging one object from one photo into another photo, into another scene. How do you make it look right? You can see here with this scene in Photoshop, this Audi actually doesn't look too bad. It's not quite in the right place, but this Lamborghini is obviously too small and just looks a little bit out of place. If we correct the perspective of the Lamborghini, adjust the sizing a little bit, we can make this look pretty cool. And we can also do the same with the Audi. In fact, we can resize the Audi and make it still look like it belongs. Because right now, if I resize the Audi, uh, all of a sudden things start to look weird. And it's like we have two giant oversized remote control cars here on this little uh, forest road. I'm going to shut the Audi layer off. Actually, before we jump into this tutorial, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a Photoshop course over on tutvid.com all about how to retouch photos. Where I cover a lot of advanced techniques, all kinds of great stuff. You can check it out. There's a little video card that just appeared on the screen. You can click it, check it out. I'm not going to talk too much about it right now, though, because everyone hates advertisements. And let's be uh, honest, we want to get to the good stuff here. So, creating a composite with a car, first and foremost, we need to determine where the horizon line is of our background image. Everything kind of revolves around that. How do we find the horizon? Well, let's take a look at a couple photos of cars first. We've got this Lamborghini here, and I can tell that this photo, well, the horizon is right up here, right? That's first and foremost. Now, if the horizon is in the top half of the image, like above this blue line, this is roughly the halfway point in the image, if your horizon line is above that line, it means that when the photo was taken, the photographer was looking downward at least a little bit, uh, depending on how far up in your frame this horizon line is. So if the horizon is way up here, they were really looking down uh, to get that shot and conversely if the horizon line is beneath the midway point of the image the photographer probably had the camera down low low and sure enough that's what our eyes tell us right this Audi the camera had to have been photographed where the camera was probably at about the headlight height of the car and if we take a peek back at the Lamborghini here it there's an obvious downward angle where we're looking down on this car that stuff is really important because when it comes time to composite into an image, we want to locate our uh, our horizon and some images just can't really go together because the, the, the perspective is so far off, you would need to incredibly alter the background of your image to the point where it just looks really bad. Now, I have another tutorial that I did where I talk all about compositing a car from one photo into another and we do tweak the perspective of the background and I show you how you can really push and pull things, but some images still just are not going to work. Uh, let's take a look here at finding and setting the horizon of our background image and getting this Lamborghini fixed up and then we'll also take a look at the Audi. This is really cool stuff and I think uh, you'll think it's pretty powerful. So if I'm looking at this image, I'm going to come up here to my notes layer and I'm going to grab my brush tool. My brush tool, not my clone stamp tool. There we go. Um, now I think the, the horizon is pretty clear in this image. It's right around here. Okay, so it kind of runs right through here, which means that it kind of runs pretty much all the way across the image, uh, like so, right somewhere around there. So what we need to do is drag out a shape that is going to match the horizon. But before we do that, and this is pretty important, we also need to determine the perspective angles of the object which we have draw, dragged into our new uh, composite. In this case, this Lamborghini. Now, there aren't really any straight lines coming off this Lamborghini, so that you would think would make it a little difficult. But with cars in particular, for the most part, if you can see the side wheels, it actually isn't too bad because you can draw a straight line that begins at the bottom of the hubcap and runs to across the bottom of the rear hub cap. That's a straight line coming off the car, and you can get your second line. You really need two lines. Your second line that comes off the top part of the wheel. And eventually, way out here somewhere, these lines are going to meet up, and that's the vanishing point of this image. Maybe not particularly this image, but of this image, that is your vanishing point. And if we know where that vanishing point is, we can make the perspective of this car look great. So, here's what we need to do. Because this car is pointing this way, we need to drag the lines off of the car going back this way. That means that I want to widen my image or give more real estate over here. So I need to push my image, uh, push some space out to the right side of my image. I can do that. It's pretty easy here by going image, canvas size, set my anchor point over here to the middle left square, and I'm going to choose to uh, choose a percentage, and I'm going to make my image... Uh, but like 300% wider than it is. Hit OK, and you can see we only pushed space to the right side of our image, not to the left. So that's great. 
what we're going to do now is grab the uh, the shape the shape tool the line tool actually and I just have it set to draw a shape layer I gave it a fill I made sure there's no stroke um, and I'm using a 10 pixel weight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and hold down my shift key and drag straight across where I think the horizon is which is right about there and drag a line all the way across my image just like that all right now that we have that I can drag this Oh, it made the notes layer into a shape layer. That's fine. I'm just going to rename it H, and I'm going to drag it down beneath my Lamborghini layer just because that's my horizon line. I don't want to get it mixed up with anything else. In fact, it's actually a little bit too low. Let's nudge it upward. There we go, kind of like that. Uh, let's grab the Lamborghini layer group here. And what we need to do is draw our lines coming off the Lamborghini now. So go back to the line tool. We're going to zoom in a little closer, but you really don't want to zoom too close because what we need to do is draw our first line and have the line touch the bottom of the front hub cap and the bottom of the rear hub cap just like that but you need to make the line very very long so this line really probably needs to come way out over you know over here or something because remember the top line has to also be long enough that they actually meet up so I'm gonna undo that this is why I like to start zoomed out so I can just go like this all right. Oh, and by the way, I'm holding down my spacebar key. That allows me to move the shape as I'm drawing it without actually placing the shape and then tweaking and adjusting it all right, so there we go. That looks like it's hitting the bottom of both wheels. Let's zoom in and check it out. Bottom of the rear, bottom of the front. Yep, it's pretty much right on the same place on each tire. That's great. Let's create our second line. So grab the line tool. We're going to start here with the top of the wheels. All right, you can see, and I can already tell the, the line is not quite long enough, I don't think. Oh, no, it is long enough. There we go. All right, so right about there is probably good. Let's just take a quick peek, and you can see our perspective is going to be off. So what we're going to do with this line, we're going to go Edit, Free Transform, and I'm going to right-click and choose Rotate, and I'm just going to rotate it this way a little bit. So I'm rotating it to the right, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys and nudge it down until the line is touching, you know, the front of both or the top of both uh, wheels, just like that. Perfect, great. And then I can hit the little check icon to commit that change back out, and let's see if our lines intersect. All right, they do. So right where these lines intersect is the theoretical vanishing point of this object. I'm not an art major, guys. I'm sure I'm getting terminology all screwed up. Forgive me, um, but I, it, it, this is just amazing stuff. Uh, so we have our vanishing point right here. What we now want to do is we want this vanishing point to touch our horizon line because if you are an art major, certainly you know that your vanishing point is going to run into your horizon line. So we need to select all both of these shapes and our Lamborghini. So I'm going to select the top shape, hold down my shift key, and select all the way down to my object. So I've got both of my lines and the Lamborghini selected. I'm going to grab my move tool. The letter, uh, the letter V is the hotkey for that. And I'm going to drag this over so it's, the car is on the road. And I need to keep moving the car up, 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 up. And right about there is proper perspective. Okay. Now the car still looks a little bit too big, so we need to size it down a little bit. But I'm going to show you how the sizing works here as well. Uh, with all three of these layers selected, we can hit Command or Control T to free transform this. And we want to set the center anchor point over at our, we want to drag it over to our vanishing point. This way we are now scaling our image into and out of the proper perspective vanishing point. So I'm going to hold down shift and alt, and that'd be shift and option on the Mac, and I can make my car bigger or smaller. So maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger, and obviously what needs to happen is the car needs to move to the right. We can do that because we can move the car side to side. It's, it's up and down that we really can't move the car because that's going to knock us off of our horizon line. So I'm going to drag it over, hold down my shift key. It's going to keep it perfectly, uh, perfectly leveled. I can commit that change. I can make all my lines go away, and we have a car that fits in perfectly the perspective of the image. Now, obviously your perspective is going to be based on whether or not you get the horizon line of your background image correctly. If you have the horizon line way up here in the air, right, like if we put the horizon line way up here, uh, let me just grab all these layers, select them all. If the horizon line's way up here, obviously your perspective is going to be all, all funkified because that's not, the, that's not where it's supposed to be. So it is dependent upon you getting the horizon of your background image correct. Let's leave the horizon line of our background image. Let's hide our Lamborghini for a second and let's take a look at this Audi. So does the principle stand true also for the Audi and will the Audi look good if we use the same technique to find correct perspective? So you can see, like if I put the car here, you can tell the perspective is off. Something is not right about it. If I put the car back here, perspective is also off. So where will the car be correct? Well, let's drag some lines out from the car. So grab the line tool. We're going to go with the bottom of the front wheel. It's just my go-to. Well, with the car, it's my go-to at least. Drag this way out. 
Something like so. And we're going to do the same thing across the top of the wheels. You know what? i got to move back a little bit. I don't think it needs to be quite that long. Yeah, we're going to meet up here uh, pretty well. Again, I'm just holding down the space bar, and I can go ahead and just move my shape as I'm creating it. Wow. You can see the horizon is very low here with this car. And that's because it was shot at a much different angle than the Lamborghini. So there we go. There's where the vanishing point of this car is. So we now, what do we need to do? Well, we need to make sure that vanishing point meets up with our horizon line. So we can select top shape, hold down the shift key, select our car. And we're going to move this guy over. So he lines right up with our horizon line like so. And again, the car still needs to be sized a little bit. So we can command or control T, move our little uh, anchor point over to the vanishing point, hold down shift and alt, shift and option. All that does, shift is constraining proper proportion. The alter option is scaling to and from that, that wherever you drop that point. And it's very important that that point is at the vanishing point. So we can just maybe drop the car down like that. Of course, drag it straight over to the side. And you can see we have great perspective for this car that was shot at a a different that had a different um, horizon line than our Lamborghini. Now, this Lamborghini, obviously, I can hear you already saying it. That Lamborghini is not the same as the orange Lamborghini that we looked at initially. But that image, I don't know, I couldn't find it again. Uh, but it had a different horizon than this Audi. Yet, we're able to make both of the images fit right into our background because we dragged those lines off. We found the vanishing point of the object being dragged into our composite, and we made that point meet up perfectly with our horizon line. And sure enough, we have two great composited images, uh, composited cars that look like they belong in the scene. I mean, a little color change here and there. You know, the window needs to be fixed here. The shadow maybe could be a little bit more perfect, things like that. But we got the perspective right. And getting the perspective right is, I mean, it's everything. It's the biggest part of the battle. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to go image, trim, and just trim away. Oh, no, I can't do that. I'm going to command or control click that uh, layer and go image crop just to get rid of all that transparent junk. So you can see that we use that technique to get the, the perspective right. And that's what you would use for cars. That's what you'd use for people. You would use it for everything. Um, some objects obviously are easier than others, uh, particularly with people. It can be difficult. But what you can do is if you're compositing them from a scene, find lines that are in the background behind the people. You can drag long lines off of those objects behind the people. Um, and you can that, that, that's the vanishing point of the image. The vanishing point of the image is the same for every object in your frame. So that's it for working with perspective in Photoshop and how it affects your composites. I know it was a little bit more of like a technical tutorial, but it's such a cool thing. I just had to throw it in there and had to talk about this a little bit. Again, if you want to see a full composite a job getting a car from one image to another, and here, let me find the finished the finished piece over here. If you want to see how we did this, there's another tutorial. I can link it here in this video. You can check it out. And we talk about that compositing technique and we talk about a bunch of other stuff as you can see over here in the layers panel. But for compositing and using perspective and a perspective line and vanishing point and all that technical mumbo jumbo jargon, I guess is the proper term. All that technical jargon. That's it for this one, guys. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dotson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Somebody better call the police because we just murdered that tutorial. Go ahead and hit the like button and show your support. Also, subscribe to this channel. Head over to tutvid.com. Use the link in this video and sign up for the newsletter to get 30 free, time-saving, powerful features, tips, and tricks for using Photoshop. And also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. You will not regret it. Do I hear the police?